Hi, welcome to this special episode of Proof Pilot. We are here to talk about derivatives, uh, especially uh, derivatives in higher dimensions. Uh, you're probably familiar with uh, Jacobian matrix from Calculus 2 from university. Uh, so I've got a question for you. So we were taught that if you have a function from Rn to Rm, then the Jacobian of this function is described as this formula which transfers to this matrix and as you can see the matrix entries are the partial derivatives of the function and they told us that the Jacobian is the derivative of the function. So I've got a question. What is the derivative of the Jacobian? Well, if you try this approach you may get confused because I mean, what's even the derivative of these two-dimensional matrix? Well, to understand that, let's go back to see what's the definition of a derivative at a particular point. So this was the definition that we were taught at kindergarten calculus. So why don't we just apply this to higher dimensions, okay? So f of x plus h minus f of x over h, that should be right, right? But wait, h is a vector. You cannot divide a vector by a vector. So this fraction right here makes no sense. Frustrating, right? So what should we do now? Let's take a step back again. I have a more fundamental question for you. Okay, why do we even define such a thing? Well, let me tell you why with an example. So let's suppose that we have this f of x and we know what f of x is in a particular point x0. Then if I want to see what f of x plus h is, what can I do is take the derivative of my function and multiply it by h and that will give me a good approximation of what f of x0 plus h is. So we can say another definition for the derivative of the function. And this definition works in higher dimensions. So we define f of p plus v is equal to f of p plus t of v plus r of v, which t is a linear approximation as we saw in the previous example. And r is a function that is sublinear and this is the definition of what a sublinear function is. Now let's see two examples to clarify some confusions that you may had in the past. Let's start really simple. Let's suppose that we have this f of x equals to x to the power of 2. Then you would easily say that the derivative of f of x is equal to 2x and in a particular point x0 equal to 1, I say that my derivative is equal to 2. Now let's take these to higher dimension. So let's define f like this. Now the derivative of this function, which is the Jacobian of the function, is equal to this matrix. And let's say that you want to see what the derivative is at x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. Then you get this matrix. But wait, this is still a function, right? Because well, we know that matrices are actually linear transformations. So this object right here is actually a function. But I just wanted to see what the derivative of the function is at this particular point. Why is it giving me this function? Well, well actually that makes sense. Let me clarify that for you. So in the previous example, because we were in one dimensional space, there was only one way to go. So if you take a derivative of the function, it gives you an scalar. But when you are in higher dimensions, there are much more ways that you can go in your space. So you have to clarify that very exactly you want to go. Okay, so there are much more directions in higher dimensions. So now that you say, where do you want to go? you multiply this d, this matrix by that vector and then you get a vector. 
which is two by one vector, which is a member of your original space. So that makes sense. Now let's get all things together, okay? So we know that RF is from Rn to Rm and the derivative is actually works in such a way that it takes a point and gives a linear space. A derivative at a point gets a vector and then gives you a vector. Now with this clarification I think you should be able to guess what the second derivative or the derivative of the Jacobian is. The derivative of the Jacobian is going to say how the change changes. So it should take a point and gives you a linear transformation in the space of linear transformations. Now let's get back to the Jacobian matrix and let's guess what the derivative of this Jacobian is. Well, it actually becomes a three-dimensional matrix which if you slice this cube you can see that the slices are actually the Jacobian derivative. So basically you take the derivative of each partial derivative with respect to the coordinate that you want and that becomes a three-dimensional matrix. And how do we know that that's true? Well, that can be easily drawn from the definition of the second derivative. So what we learned was that the derivative is actually a linear approximation. The Jacobian is the best linear map at a point. The second derivative, which is called the Hessian matrix, described that how the map changes. And that's the end of the video for today. Don't forget to subscribe and follow. Thanks for watching.